What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, as always. I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's had a great Thirsty Thursday. Um, we're getting ready for the Cowboys versus the Philadelphia Eagles in a couple of days. Um, I got some people who are upset with me because I'm going back home tomorrow, and they're like, wait a minute, wait a minute, the last two games you've been at the Red Brick House, if we lose, it's on you. It's like, oh my God. It's like, are you serious? So I hope that it's not the mojo of the Red Brick House has been the reason why the Cowboys have been winning. But um, going into this game, Cowboys are looking healthy. Tyron Smith is under bubble wrap right now and is looking like he's going to be playing. So we literally have about as healthy a team going into Philadelphia um, as we've had. Um, listening to some of the Eagle fans out there, they're saying that there's going to be a bounty on Dak Prescott because they're tired of him putting 40 burgers plus on him. Um, I hope that they're not intentionally trying to hurt the man, but <laughs> I wouldn't put it past Eagle fans. But I'm going to give you guys a little something here. There's perception and then there's reality. I saw something tonight that just blew my mind, and I didn't even realize it, is scoring. Yeah, scoring. Our offense has not been in sync, except you can really say the best game they've played all season is this past one. That's the first game. You had Dak Prescott, four TD passes. You had CeeDee Lamb with 170 yards. You saw Brandon Cooks being used. You saw them hitting Jay Ferguson for four catches. You saw motion. You saw CeeDee Lamb as the X receiver. You saw all kinds of things. You say, okay, this is potential to be a really good offense and if we're going to play like this. And then if you get Tyron Smith back and he can stay for more than one game, you know, you really have an opportunity to be really, really good. But if I told you that the Miami Dolphins are averaging 33.1 points a game with that one game of 70 points they put on Denver, kind of skews the numbers a little bit um, right there. They're number one. Do you know who's second in scoring offense or score points, team scoring per game? It's not the Eagles, they're third. So you're probably thinking, it must be Kansas City. Nope, not Kansas City. Then you're thinking Buffalo, it's got to be Buffalo. Nope, it's not Buffalo. It's the Dallas Cowboys. 28.1 points per game. Now I know what you're saying. Oh, well, it's only because the Dallas Cowboys defense has got three pick sixes. Well, that's true. That does help. But it doesn't handicap you how you score points. It's just the fact that you score points. And right now, the Dallas Cowboys, per game, are averaging the second most in the NFL. That actually surprised me. It really surprised me. That's right, more than Philly. So, when you think that we have the second highest scoring team in the NFL, and we have the fourth highest defensive scoring team in the NFL. Man, that's pretty good. But they don't tell you that on the shows. They don't tell you that at all. They're going to try and find and, and, and cherry pick some statistics that make it sound like the Cowboys suck. You know, the Eagles have been barely beating teams like the Commanders, letting them score 31 points. You know, we get handicapped because we blow out the Jets or we blow out New England or we blow out the Giants. They say, oh, well, they're nobody. Other teams struggle with them, but that's okay because they're not playing their best ball yet. Well, I'm here to tell you, the Cowboys have just begun to start playing their best ball, and they've been blowing people out not playing their best ball. If they can get a handle on it, and this game right now, is a launch pad 
You win this game, you feel so much better about yourself. You got a three game win streak going, and you are now with the same amount of losses as the Eagles, and you literally control your destiny as far as home field advantage goes. I was saying to Brian and, and guys that, to be honest with you, the Detroit Lions actually have the inside track for home field advantage. I don't know if it's deserving because, I mean, they still got five games, two against uh, Minnesota without Kirk Cousins. They got two against the Bears and still another one against the Packers. That's five teams that don't have a quarterback right there. The biggest game they got left is the Dallas Cowboys. So other than that, there's nobody on their list that's over 500. Bro, that sets up nicely for them. And the thing is, shout out to the Eagles. I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm giving you guys more love than you deserve. But last year, you guys had a cakewalk of a schedule. It was not that difficult. You didn't face a lot of the top-tier quarterbacks. Dak Prescott missed one game. The one game he did play still scored a 40-burger on you. This year, starting this week, is when you start playing real quarterbacks. And you won't get a break. We're about six weeks. This is where the schedule, this is where the rubber meets the road. This is where things start getting hard. Now I'm hoping and praying that we have our shit together from here on out. What's funny for me is I call Philly 500 during the uh, live stream because he seems to have been a little bit reserved. In fact, I will say most of the Eagle fans, I, I got some of them coming in and say, oh, we're going to win. But they're not doing the bravado that they did all summer long, where they were telling us how much better we were. It, you know, I, I've been conditioned to believe that the Eagles have the best offensive line, best quarterback, best wide receivers, and best defensive line, that they're head and shoulders above us. But yet, I don't hear the Eagle fans boasting about how they're going to blow us out. Huh. Hmm. Are they not as confident in their team as they said they were? I'm asking for a friend. So, it's been, oh, cool. A long, wonderful day that I've been happy to be in the world. And um, tomorrow is a new day. Hopefully, I'll be in it. But let me say, as always, always tell the people you love how much you love them. Because you might not get the chance again. And I love you guys. And tomorrow is finally freaking Friday. One day closer to the Cowboys versus the Eagles. That being said, I am going to turn out the lights. Go take a shower and go to bed. I appreciate y'all. Peace.